Today's guest is a two-time Kentucky Derby winner, and he's um, and he's also won the Preakness. If you you familiar with horse racing and outdoor horsing, and this man is a special man. He's from uh, Veracruz, Mexico, and uh, really excited to learn all about jockeying. I've always wanted to know about it. You know what I'm saying? Who's in that cockpit of that horse? Today's guest is Mr. Mario Gutierrez. For me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you. Mario Gutierrez, man. So what happened, man? You got you had you had you had some. Uh, what happened yesterday? You said something happened. Uh, well, I was riding a couple of things. My car broke down yesterday, so I took it to the dealership. On the interstate or on a on a on a side road? No, I was in the fr- in the free in the oh, highway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's always a real rodeo, Yo, bro. Man, when you break yeah. down out there, it was a brand new car too, so I don't know what happened. So uh, yeah, I had to take it to the to the dealership and then uh, get a loaner car. And this morning I had to go to the track to like you know, do the training, the usual training that I had to do before racing. Okay. Uh, I was doing that. I was getting ready to leave, grab a couple of things to show you guys. And then um, as I was ex- getting out of the racetrack, freaking car power went off. The same no. thing happened. The loaner car broke down too. No, so, the loaner broke down. <laughs> <laughs> so my age, I called my agent right away and then he, he loaned me his car. And he's oh, like, get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so when you go, uh, and let's put it, what brand of car is it, man? Let's get this brand out there. They need. To oh, know. I don't even want to say it. You don't? It's, it's, it's a fancy car, actually. It is? It is. It, it. BMW, maybe? No, up. Up? Yeah. Oh, Range Rover. And in that area, it's like a Maserati. It oh, was a wow, Maserati. Yeah. yeah, it's a Maserati? Yeah. <laughs> you drive a Maserati? <laughs> well, no, that was a loaner car. I, I drive an Alfa Alfa Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. Romeo. Oh, that's what Nick drives. And then uh, uh, the engine light went on in that car. It's, that's what happened. Like I was driving and then the power went out. Like oh. it's just like, like, probably a bicycle could have gone faster than that. So. And when the power goes out in your car, do you kind of get that same feeling? I, you get actually, horse? I do. I was doing like, come on, come on. Just one more pull. You have to do it. Oh, I did. I did that. Actually, I did. I did do that. I can see so, that. It's yeah. just almost like a habit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, even when I watched my replays, when I, like after like, um, uh, the race finish and I come back to the York show. Man, if I win or finish a close second, I'm watching the replay and all of a sudden, I'm, as I'm getting to the wire on the replay, I'm like leaning towards, like thinking that something different is going to happen. It's just a habit. Oh, man. just a habit. That's interesting, man. Yeah. Um, and so you're, uh, whenever you said like today you went to, or yesterday or today you went to do the training, like what is that like? So you go there, is there a time you have to be there on a race day? So today's a race day. Yeah, today's a race day. Well, typically even in a race day, we, we uh, Monday to, through, what, the seven days, Monday through Sunday, we uh, train horses. Okay. You know, and those horses that we, we train in, um, we usually get to run them like, you know, a week from now, like, or 15 days from now. So we're constantly working these horses and then like they're not necessarily gonna run on the weekend you know but they might run like the week the weekend after you know so i see so horses that are gonna be like say if i'm gonna go to the Future, racetrack yeah, yeah. like maybe in a week or two the horses i'm seeing gonna see then you guys are kind of training them getting them used to the getting, track no getting ready no just like a like a normal athlete you know getting the physical training into it you know the long capacity so they're able to push harder in the stretch and things like that it's like no it's Oh there, wow! There so the, you're, the, so the you, athletes, yeah. you guys get them out there like athletes. And what time do you guys do that kind of each day? So That's early in the morning. The racetrack open around like I think four thirty, you know, and then it closes at like ten o'clock. I usually get there at six thirty, you know. That's when I start, and okay. usually by nine nine forty five, I'm done. Wow! Yeah. So, dude, you're on the horse and it's going <laughs> fast, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is it scary or no? No, it's not scary for me anymore. You know, it was a little bit scary when I, I started which, yeah. uh, when I was young. But now it's just like, you know, like any other racing um, athlete, I guess, you know, like you just get used to you love for that. Like, I love what I do. So I'm like, I live for that. You know, it's like the adrenaline is the excitement. And it's, I like all of that. 
who's the athlete? Are you the athlete or the horse is the athlete or you're both the athlete? We're both, you know, like a, it's almost like a, it's, well, no, it's, it's not almost like it's a team, you know, like he isn't a, the athlete, you know, he usually, he actually does most of the work, you know, the hard work, you know, yeah. uh, we are athletes too, because we need to constantly be uh, fit enough to, to ride these horses, like have our weight, you know, uh, um, checked, you know, mm -hmm. we check, you know, there's a certain way that we we can pass you know so that's what like f uh, physically we had to be super fit because these are like thousand pound animals that we need to control and we need to you know like um, be able to manage and, oh and, yeah and high speed um when you uh when you so like on a race day what will your day be like on that day uh, it's usually so like later today when you go in for the race like mm -hmm. what is it like when you get there like how do you go through like what is kind of the the typical the typical yeah well for me it's like you know like I, I um i wake up like i said i go to morning training and then uh, that usually finish at like like i say 10 o'clock you're done you know okay I, and when you're training these horses like what are you doing you're like just almost like it like it, act, acting at a race almost yeah kind of? yeah it's exactly that it's just like it's, we simulate a, a a little race by themselves you know it's just like you know each horse you know it's not like we're working a tango force at the same time not like a race but like for example uh uh I'll work my horse five furlongs. You know, that means that I had to make five furlongs in a certain amount of time, like 101. The trainer will tell you how much, how fast you want him. You He wants him, he wants you to train the horse. Okay. You know, so he if he tells you, hey, I want you to work five furlongs in 101. So you um you do your best to pass those five furlongs in one minute and one I second. See. So. Um, so you're out there just kind of setting goals, almost like a uh, like like somebody on a track team. Would yeah, be doing it, 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 that's exactly that, you know, okay. and that that give like the horse fitness and the long capacity for like. And do they ready. like it? Do the horses like being racers? You think? Thoroughbreds do. Thoroughbreds do. Yeah, thoroughbreds do. It's like a any normal, uh, well, any living creature. You know, there's some horses that don't. You know, there's some horses that like. You know, that no matter how much you ask them, they will. They choose no born to do that, you know. But they're like oh they, yeah, like Antonio Brown, kind of a little. <laughs> and there are some horses that they do really love, you know. They're like, uh, is well, it's maybe like uh, I can't explain that because it's a feeling, you know. Sometimes I'm on top of them and I do the very minimum, and I just encourage them to go a little faster, and they are waiting for that. To oh, they take want off. It. Yeah, they want it. Yeah. So. so it's interesting. So some of them, can you tell sometimes how how excited they are about it and how much they like it? Yeah. Oh, you can. Yeah, well, I yeah, I, I'm I'm I feel lucky because I I feel that I can tell that you know because yeah. I grew up so, with horses since early right. my early age. So, and uh, so yeah, so what was that like? So I'm trying to think of what else I would think about like being out there, and then okay, so then you get there for the race day. Now on the race day, on the, on the race, you guys show up, and what happens? Like, do you have to be drug tested? Does the horse have to be drug tested? Yeah, horses get drug tested. We don't. We um we do get drug test drug test too, but that's like a, it's kind of like a, like a lottery, you know. The officials go there and like they will just pick randomly, you know, whoever you're gonna get test. Or okay. Whatever, whatever they want, do you wanna get test? And then you had to go and and, and get test. Do some people use? Or is there any like performance enhancing drugs for the riders? Do, is anybody well, out there like some some guys can be high and do it or do whatever? No, 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 no. We are like treated like as any other athlete, and, and this, like uh, there is not not the, um if we are in a Percocet or something like that we need to have a prescription. If if you don't if all of a sudden you get test and then you pop for a pill like you know like an orc or something like that, then you get you get suspended or fine. damn yeah. really? Oh uh, yeah. So everybody got to really keep it together, the yeah. horse and the people, huh? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like a lot of jockeys have prescriptions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let um, me show you mine. <laughs> when you, uh, so what is the fitness of it like for you? Fitness, I, for us, because we have to be more lean mm -hmm. and stronger. Well, as strong as I like a... One twenty pounder can get, you know. So right, because yeah. I'm from Louisiana originally. They have a lot of guys from Louisiana that are jockeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot of Louisiana like uh, jockeys. we have like Alvarado. Like there's a couple of names you would hear. Melanson. Yeah. Like a lot of names you would hear a Candace lot. Candace Ormo, I think he's a whole famer in horse racing industry. He's from there, I think. Yeah. Is he? What's his name? Candace Ormo. Uh, what's the last name? The letter that starts with D. Dormon. D O R M O N D. No, yeah. D E. The D E, the, the long, I'm saying, the long, no. 
Ken Whiskey. Oh, I, I'm, my English is horrible, so it's my second language. So like, don't. don't mine's do bad. It's my first language. In yeah, that one, language. the first one. Oh, that's a hard name for English people. Yeah, Ken Ken DeSormo. Where's he out of Louisiana? A lot of guys. They got a little those little swamp babies, man. Yeah. A lot of French little swamp <laughs> babies. They pull them up from Maurice, Louisiana. Yeah, that's a that is a real swamp town right there. <laughs> and so it's popular in that area. Is it? Are there a lot of? Are you Mexican or which Mexican? Both yeah. your parents are Mexican. Yeah, both my parents. So, are or is there a lot of Mexican jockeys as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, yeah. a lot of jockeys, a lot of Latin Latino jockeys, a lot of Panamanians, Puerto Ricans. Um, huh. Yeah. So yeah, it's because it's interesting that a lot of those guys are from Louisiana, and then a lot of them are from Mexico. Why? Because it's smaller stature. I think so, but there's really jockeys all over the place. We have like uh, Italian jockeys here right now. We have a uh, 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 French jockeys, you know. I think it's like whoever is small enough to be a jockey. Oh, just, <laughs> so it's more about a size thing. Not yeah. really. It doesn't yeah. matter kind of where people are from. Yeah. What um what was your journey in a jockey and like how did it kind of start out for you? Because it's such a unique. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. Uh, this guy Walker Bue- Walker Bueller. He plays for. The Dodgers, actually, and he was on here a while back, and he and I went to dinner the other night, and he's telling me about he had a brother-in-law who was a um, jockey, yeah. and oh. Robbie Alvarado is the guy's name, oh, and Robbie. so he went, uh, so we, I was like, maybe we should get a jockey to come on the podcast and talk, <laughs> and then you and Nick spoke, and yeah. Um, and so, yeah, man, it's just fascinating to think of. Uh, to think of what that life is like and what it and and who even does it like so take me again a little bit more like your fitness and your size and your weight what do you have to stay at i probably if you i had to stay like under like 117 118 117 you know that in case that i have to reduce i don't have to reduce too much you know like if i have to ride horses with like 118 i only had to pull up two pounds the day of the race you know something like that you know that i try to manage that like really well uh, do they weigh you before the race? Each race, before each race, they weigh you. Wow. Yeah. And if you're over, can the trainer or the owner say we're going to get someone else? Uh, I think we're only allowed to be. Like, you have to. If I'm going to be, if I think I'm not going to make that weight, I had to report it like an hour earlier. Okay. That before the uh, before the first race. So if I already know that hey, I can make that weight, I'm going to be one pound over. I have to. If I don't do that, then yeah, we get penalized. Or I think yeah, the in the trainer. Is allowed to say, well, I don't, I need to replace my jockey. So on the race day, there's usually the same jockeys, like on a scheduled day of races at like, um, say at like um, Santa Anita, right? Mm-hmm. Santa Ana, what is it? Santa, Santa Anita. Santa Anita, right? Yeah. So on a scheduled day of races, there may be like 10 races or something for the day. Yeah, today are the 11. Wow, so you're going to race 11 times? No, no, I only ride four horses, four races. And is yeah, it fine. every other race? How do they put you guys in there? It depends. It's, it's very complicated, right? Because like that uh, is um, in the racing office, they decide what race goes first, what race goes second. So it's like depends if, uh, you know, depends where, where I land. You know, I can ride the first four, but then not necessarily like, or I can run the first, the third, the sixth, the seven. And so so like, do you ride for a specific trainer? Do you ride on a specific horse? Like... How does who does the jockey work for? I'm be, I'm very lucky that I ride for a specific owner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you ride only on his horses. I ride most all of his horses. I ride. Okay. All of them, and I, that has been since 2012. Oh, I'm wow. very very lucky. So I'm in a very very sweet position that 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 way. Um. So I'm not specifically for the same trainer for the owner. You know. So. Uh, so that's 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 good for me. So, yeah, uh, he has. So a lot you of have horses. more like that. You, that that means you just have like more of a long term, or, or you just have uh, work. What's it called, Nick? Uh, work if you have the same job at a long time. A tenure. Yeah, or yeah, you just have like some assurance. You're more assured. Like, do you have a contract kind of? It's like it's not like a real contract. It's more like a spoken contract. You know, like a like a French. Like he's been so loyal to me, and I've been loyal to him. So like it's just like a. a uh, partnership partnership that is cash continue we had early success in 2012 i think that's what what security. sparked it yeah so, yeah some job security yeah so, yeah so uh so then so when you get on the horse you're on the horse and you take the horse out to the what to the racetrack to like the voting booth you know what i'm talking about like the oh thing? the paddock 
that we call it the paddock. Oh, where the like paddock the, is the circle, the, right? The little circle where, like, you know, the horses run. Uh, um, before we yeah. get on top of the horses, they, like, you know, there's, like, the people can look at yeah. them, you know. Uh, if you're going to bet, you're, like, The gamblers, look for, I go, look, look that's when I go. L- you're going to look and see which horse you like, and you can yeah, bet them. Yeah, look at them. Then, uh, then uh, the trainers, like, like, put like put us on the horse, and then we we, we go to the racetrack and do the warm the pre-warm-up before the, before the race. Okay, so if I'm a better, right? Uh-huh. Which Nick is, but if I'm a batter <laughs> and I go to the paddock, is there anything I can look for as a batter that can give me any sort of insight as to how the the only thing that I can that I can that I can that I can give you in a, a tip sort of you know try to look for horses that are not too nervous or sweaty you know because they usually are like uh, they're not gonna perform well like most of those horses are like you know they're too nervous and so sweaty they already. Um, spending a lot of energy you know oh. being being like so uh that sweaty horse yeah, sweaty, dude yeah. <laughs> and besides that I'm, I, I'm i'm horrible my wife told me like never to say to give her any tips about horse racing because she always loses <laughs> no does she like to better now <laughs> she does once in a while I'd be like oh my god i'm training this horse that i really really like you know you should put some 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 money on him you know and then uh the horse will run third oh. or fourth <laughs> and then she'll be like i don't want no more of your tips <laughs> <laughs> um so you get out there you go out for the warm-up and the warm-up is what it's just kind of like a little trot or it's like truck a- or gallop you know try to like get the get the flow going on, on the horses you know and then um, um try to warm up everything you know before like because now they're when it's time to race you're gonna you're gonna ask them to do their best you know so. yeah and can a horse stretch can you tell a horse to stretch or they just stretch if they want to you can stretch the horses. You can like there's like you can you can do they they have chiropractors, they have massage therapists, the horses. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, what kind of pervert would stand there and just massage a horse leg all day? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you had to you had to ask one of those guys to do that. <laughs> yeah, That's who we need to get in here. Can you imagine just standing there all day? <laughs> and try horses. not to get an erection that would be the hardest <laughs> thing i feel like even if you were straight male and you you and the, and the horse is straight i think it would just be so hard not to how uh how strong are these animals they can be pretty strong they're horses that can be like so nice you know in terms to like you can like uh pretty much do anything with them like uh, they obey you know like you can one hand you can maneuver you know and there are some horses that are like you Two hands, all you weigh, all you can pull, and they're still like no listening to you. So it, it's tricky, you know. It's Just like fun. people, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are like people, so smart. Do they feel like? Do, do horses seem like people? Like the more time you spend around horses, do they seem like people? Do they seem like? Is there another animal that you kind of relate them to? Do you feel like you actually can have like a connection with the horse? What is it like? Because I've always been a little bit probably afraid of horses, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because we never went around any horses growing up, you know, like mm-hmm. we would see some, but, and like feed them apples and stuff through the fence, but I never like spent time around them, you know? Oh, horses are, are so super smart. I think that's, yeah, like the more time you spend with with a horse, you know, the more you get to know them and the more you establish a connection. And then like, once you establish a connection, it's like, it's like having a dog, you know, you love that animal. Like it's just like, it's a strong bone that you, that you, that you. Uh, that you have with this horse you know so yeah like time uh, the more time you spend with with, with the horses is like it's hard not to love really to fall in love with them yeah just like a dog just like a dog yeah oh. yeah and they're very therapeutic because you can like um, my wife has a pony that we can use it to trail ride you know and then like if you're having a bad day you know or when when i'm having a bad day or like i have too many too much thinking on my head i go i saw him i take him to the trails in the mountains in altadena oh. and it's just so therapeutic it's just like so cool and relaxed and you know i should live on one of those that's what i need <laughs> i should be tied around one of those i need some therapy i need some therapy man um so you get out there you back to the race you get then you get in the cage right or actually we the had gate. A, the gate we had a question that came in right here from right. a uh from a user for you right here not a user. <laughs> look, I'm not judging the guy. He does look like he maybe he's like been up user. late. Yeah, he looks like maybe he's been up a little late, but uh, it also looks like John Cusack's brother. What's up, Mario? Quick question. Are there jockey groupies, like chicks that travel around, so when you win the Kentucky Derby, you're golden for a couple weeks? 
<laughs> yeah, what's that like? Are they kind of like, uh, did you meet your wife through the races? What's up? I did. Uh, yes, I think my, my, uh, my, I met my wife because uh, my father-in-law at the time when I, I, I went to Canada, I met my wife in Canada. Oh, she's he, Canadian? Yeah, she's Canadian. Oh, Canadians are awesome, huh? Yeah. So um, her dad used to own some horses. Um, and that's how true. I met her family first, and she she was studying in Victoria, Canada. So I didn't meet her until like two years after that. After I I was in Canada. Oh, so the family already liked you. Oh yeah, they oh, love me. That's they good, still yeah? love me. They love me more than they do. Then they let you <laughs> then they let you ride their horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, to the question, yeah, I think that in any sports, I think that any sport has li- like like some groupies. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool, man. <laughs> Um, what type of, like, who are the owners these days? Like a lot of times when I think of horse owners, I think of like a rich old white guy kind of, is that still kind of the, and no judgment against it, but is that still like the type of person that owns horses? Do you like, or is there all types? Yeah. I think of this guy, whoever this guy is. And I don't even, (laughs) we don't know who this guy is, but that's who we think of. Is this, does this look like every owner kind of, or is it all types of people? It's all type of like, well, they basically, whoever wants a horse, like they have money. Right. They have a lot of money. Okay. So it's someone that has expendable income. They could get a horse. Yes. So like, I don't think necessarily has to be white, but it needs, it needs to have some cash. So they need to have some cash. Yeah. Do they ever have groups out there where you where you feel like it's a um like it's a setup like they have like a shady owner or it seems like a little weird like like that like maybe they're just trying to drug a horse and get it through. Does that ever happen or did it used to happen? Do you ever notice anything like that? Well, I I don't like I I don't that I don't know specifically specifically no you know like a. I say, say that again, you know, because like, I, like, you, like a group or like, like I guess. Do you ever see like? Is there ever like, um, like a owner trainer kind of a, a a team? A team? Oh, a team that try to do that try, shady shit. Yeah, often, and it just like, and maybe the, you've seen them over the years, and they come and gone or whatever. But has there ever? Is there a lot of that going on, or is stuff pretty re- like? Is it? Maybe back in the days will happen a lot, and no, not in racetracks like 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 Santa Anita. That will that will be considered like a like a like a in. Um, will be con- Santa Anita will be considered like you know like one of the top racetracks. Santa Anita, right. New York, Kentucky, you know like in prestigious, and then, uh, prestigious, you know like a like an elite or like an A racetrack, right, like an right. A racetrack, and then you you have B racetrack, C racetrack, you know, and that probably. M- probably will cure more into like like small race right where there is not a lot of your restriction or no not a lot of people watching but like i wouldn't be surprised if that those type of things happen there oh know? it gets a little more seedier the See, way yeah the, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the further you go down yeah oh maybe wow. like for example like ufc i watch a lot of fights you know like say yeah. ufc now with you sad and everything is like cracking down and things like that huh? but yeah. the more you go to the lesser organization well maybe they're not as tight you know so oh the urine you could drink it i feel like off of half these guys <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'd have had a glass of whatever anderson silva had in them, I think. I mean, they just had, yeah, it's definitely a lot cleaner these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are some of the fighters you like? Oh, I like a bunch. You do? I like Nate, the Nick bro, the yeah, Nick Diaz brothers. Yeah, Those are hard huh? to love, yeah. Um, I wish Nick fought more, man. I know. I don't know what's up with him. I wish, I wish to. Oh, I, 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 I get it. I just don't want him to get a, older and then wish he had fought more when I know, he was right? younger, you yeah. know? But you never know with those guys, right? He They, they really seem so genuine, you know, that like, well, the way I look at him, I don't think that will occur to him, you know? Yeah, that's you know? a good point. He, he probably lives just, like, you yeah. know, he does what he wants. It right. seems like, so. I think they definitely do what they want, <laughs> yeah. no doubt. <laughs> yeah, did you see that fight the other night with Edwards? Yeah. That was good, huh? Yeah. God, I was like, I was come on, go for the kill. You and he's know? just pointing at him. He's it. pointing at him, and I'm like, my wife is yelling, I'm yelling, oh. my son is looking at us like, oh, what the heck is going on with you guys? Yeah. You know? And yeah. I'm yelling, and you, and go for it. You don't even have a son, so it was like way insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was magical, man. Yeah. What do you think about the, uh, did you see the last Poirier-McGregor uh, fight? Yeah, so I was surprised. I was surprised at uh, how... Fairly easy, uh, Poirier uh, beat McGregor. Yeah. I think was... McGregor beats him this time. You think so? I, I think so. I feel like it's, uh, I, I mean, I definitely don't think that, but I think it's hard <laughs> to come. I, I just think it's hard to like get that mentality, you know? Oh, but, but unless he doesn't have that anymore, you know? I, I, right. I will blame the first the first fight until like, you know, he's like, you know, 
long time hasn't fight, you know, and then like well, that's yeah, a good point. That, that's that's what I think, you know. But and the, I all related again to horses. There is some horses that you know the very good horses that are undefeated, like they can win one, two, three, four, five races in a row. And the moment they touch the feet, the moment somebody some other horse pass them, they never the same. Really? Yeah. So, I, so that thing happens to fighters too, you know, the more, you know, they feel yeah. this thing and all of a sudden the, you know, two, three losses and yeah, like mess up with their head too. Happens to comedians too, man. Happened to me. I think. <laughs> uh, but no, that's so interesting. So you, there's, there can be like a moment that happened in a race, like in a big race where another horse passes it and it's never the same. Yeah. Yeah, for horses, it happened. It happened to me. It happened to a very good horse that I, I was really? riding. Really? Yeah. Which one was it? What was Nyquist, it? Nyquist, 2016 Kentucky Derby winner. Right, and so that's the, and so see, so yeah. So take me back to like, I mean, you had just started racing, right? Yeah. You'd been racing and or you had just been racing and where in California for a year? Not even after a year. you won. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, my first Kentucky. I was lucky enough to get my first Kentucky Derby back in 2012. And then I was racing in Canada. Okay. On 2011, the races, the racing, the racing season finished in um, September, October. So uh, usually I will come down to San Francisco and ride in San Francisco in the winter. And then, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, they didn't want to give stalls to my the st my Canadian stable that I was with at the time. Okay. So they reach out to Santa Anita, and Santa Anita was like, "Yeah, we'll give you some." St um, some stable so you can you can run here your horses so that's how i ended up in la you know in santa anita in late uh 2011 so that was your first time getting to los angeles to lunch so yeah and wow. then that was like yeah october november december january and in four months then i was i was uh i, I got introduced to 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 all have another which went in and in, in the kentucky there yeah. yeah yeah you won twice right he won the Kentucky and then he won the Prignus. Yeah. But you won. I won the, yeah, I won 2011, 2012 and then 2016. So was there like a, is there like a rookie year for riders? Yeah. Yeah. Apprentice. We call, we call, we, we are called apprentice when we are, uh, our first year, uh, when they, we get the license to be a professional rider, then our first year we call apprentice. And then with that, that we are allowed to raise. 10 pounds lighter than the professional jockey. So if a professional jockey is what, 118? 118, then you get, you're allowed to run your horse with 108, you know? You could ride on 108? Yeah. How do you I, I can't, not anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to. Yeah. You didn't even chew gum, yeah, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, no, I, I can't anymore. I used to when I was 18 years old. Yeah. Oh, so what phases, what phases a jockey out of the job? Well, I, I think that's like fighters, you know, like you're... Um, your body will tell you, or or unfortunate, or an accident, an unfortunate accident that can end your career at any moment. Does that happen sometimes? I mean, any yeah, moment. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> a little hey, M Night Shyamalan there. Yeah. The end, brother. Does yeah. it? Uh, and does it happen? Does that happen? Sorry, I have so many questions right now. It's okay. It's okay. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, does that? Yeah, take me some, through some of the dangers. What is some of that danger like? If you have a, like, is it like a like a? How can you get hurt? How can you get? I mean, I know you can get thrown off of the horse. That's probably the biggest fear. Yeah, that's probably the biggest fear. Uh, uh, the biggest fear pr for me is probably like getting getting thrown off uh, of a horse if I'm like in the in the first and in, in the for front runners because then you have you know for sure you oh, have people yeah. coming behind you. You know, and I, like I said, these are like twelve twelve hundred pound animals and Some then bad you drivers too. Yeah, you don't want you don't want none of them to catch you mid air or like on the floor. So yeah. that's probably the so that's almost one of the scary parts I bet about taking the lead is that it's somewhere in your head you're like now if something bad happens all these horses are gonna come up behind yeah me. but you don't think I think like the moment that you start that you had those thoughts that's probably a good a good time to retire oh like, I see. yeah if you're like going in the front and you're thinking about oh my god you know like <laughs> I better pull well, back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no you should be focusing on, on how to win the race yeah I think the moment you start having those type of thoughts I think you should call it quits that would be me. I'd be like, you guys go on ahead. You know? <laughs> uh, how, ex how, okay, so you get into the paddock. You get, or you get into the gate. 
right? Is that after the warm up? Yeah, the gate that were so uh, after the warm up, you uh, guys. Because yeah, I'm always wondering whenever I'm there betting or whatever. I'm like, Jesus, what are it takes for them? Yeah, they got one guy, and then the guy in the pink hat comes out. I'm like, why is the guy wearing pink? I don't even know what's going on. I feel like it's a gender reveal. <laughs> but then finally, they get everybody lined up. Yeah. Is it easier to be the first horse that gets lined up in there, or the last horse, or does it even matter? Yeah, I think it does matter. I, I uh, particularly would like to like um, loan last, but you don't always. Well, we don't choose that. It's like it's like whoever number you have is by number. So whoever right. is like you know, if you have the seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, they're pro you're probably gonna be um, put on the gate last. Right. So that, I prefer that, you know, because then my horse doesn't have too much time to think inside the gate. It's just basically go ready, go. Yeah. You know, so. And so once your horse is in the gate, what are you doing in there? Like, um, I see you, you brought a, is this a saddle? Yes, yeah, a saddle. Yeah, that's what we use to ride them. Can I pick it up? Yeah, you can pick it up. Dang, dude. <laughs> this is the lingerie of saddles, huh? <laughs> My God. Japanese saddle. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Shout out to Japan. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Japan, dude. Very ironic that they are have a driving instrument <laughs> that they have put together. <laughs> no shade, but that's wild. So how does this even? I know, right? <laughs> I think I'd just rather wear thick underpants. I'd be like, this is so small. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this goes towards the front of the horse. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, and what is this? What is this? This is your stirs, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And this is yours, MG, right here. Yeah, MG, yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, so, and this is about as, this is a pretty commonplace uh, saddle. Yeah, that would probably, like, most of, yeah. Unless you go, like, there is a little bit bigger saddles, and they actually way smaller saddles. Really? This is probably, like, mid-size saddle, you know? Okay. There is, like... There is some saddles that probably like weigh oh one pound God. for like people like jockeys that struggle a lot with weight. Oh really? Yeah, they're basically just stirrups and and, and, and then that little tiny thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. insane. Honestly, like it probably is like this big. <laughs> some chubby jockey <laughs> like rolls a, in there. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Okay, so, and so this hooks into the belts that go. The girt, yeah, yeah, like it's like a like um like, like elastic band. You okay. know, we call them girts, you know that that's what I mean. Okay, so you're out there, you get on the, you have the saddle, you're on the horse, and you're in the gate, and then what happens? What are you doing while you're in the gate to keep the horse ready to race? We just try to, to um, uh, your best and to like just have a, you, we have a, another person that is kind of like helping you manage the horse while you're in the gate, and this happens more than maybe like 15 seconds you're in the gate, you know, 20 seconds, 25 right. seconds the most, you know, so for that time you have a person kind of helping you control the horse and kind of like make sure he's looking Forward, forward. Just like favorite. a rodeo, almost like a rodeo when they're getting on the bull. Something like yeah. that, you know? And then um, hold on and wait till wait till the, the, the gate open and then it's, and it's go time. Ah. Liquid death. You know, the summer gets the most out of you. Physically, it drains you. It'll suck the water. It'll purge it. Get it out of your skin, out of your body, out of your arms and legs. It'll get you. That's why Babbel is the number one selling language learning app. From ordering in restaurants or asking for directions, Babbel will help. If you don't know how to talk and you ask for directions, someone's not going to know what you want. You might ask for direction. You might be there. Might, your house could be on fire, and they're going to hand you a hat or a, you know, a fork. You don't know. You have to be able to communicate. Babbel's fifteen-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go, like Spanish. Wish I knew more, so I could talk to Mario today in Spanish. With Babbel, you can choose from fourteen different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. That's right. Learn a language, damn it. I'm just going to ask you point blank. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you get an, ad an additional three months for free. That's six months. That's six months of babbling for the price of just three. Go to Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com and use promo code Theo for an extra three months free. That's right. Learn el lengua. Go to Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com 
code THEO for an extra three months free. Keeps is what I've been using to keep my hair. You know, I got hair and I got time on this earth and those are things that usually don't coincide. So I'm trying to keep what I have, keep that carpet on my head. Keeps helps men keep their hair and prevent hair loss. Now, if you're already entirely bald, then Keeps is not the right solution. Nope, it can't reverse what's going on, but it can help you keep what you have. That's why I use it. Look at my head. It's not bad. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. Yep, you got to fight back. It's low-cost treatment started just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions. Or generic. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Theo to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Theo to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Theo. And so once the gate opens, what is the first thing? you Does the horse automatically know to go? They, yeah, they know to go. And then sometimes you have to encourage them, you know, uh, and then then. Whoever the plan, whoever whatever the plan was with the with the trainer, whatever the trainer told you, like, hey, I want you to be in the front. I want you to be, you know, mid pack. You know, let two three horses go. I want you to be last. You know, then right away, then you try to 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 um, do the best you can to stick to the plan. Wow, is that the most? What's the most exciting point in the race, if there is? Like, is it right when that gate opens? Or is that frenetic? It feels like it would be so like. There's so many things happening at once. Is it hard to kind of just stay in in what's going on with you? Yeah, well, the the most like, definitely the gate because it's like like an F one race racing, you know, like yeah. uh, the start, right? Everybody, you want to get your position as soon as as soon as you can, you know, and then from that point on, so uh, uh, then then you're able to like chill, relax, save your horse, or like you know, those type of things, you know. So the start is definitely like very crucial and very excited but like a lot of adrenaline a lot of rush going on to me that part and then you know like um like the last quarter of a mile of the race you know especially if i know oh i still have a lot of you still have something know, in the tank. i still have a lot in the tank you know that's that's probably the most excited for me. how do you know if you have a lot in the tank is it because you've previously tried that horse and got an idea of what's in that horse or is it because in that moment you can kind of tell what's in the tank both you know like it's because like you get to know the horse prior you know on training and <laughs> i consider myself lucky you know because like i can tell by choose holding my reins you know like being in being in sync being in and 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 um how do you say that's like synchronized or being in oh yeah in a mutual like a female you know, volleyball squad kind of like yeah, yeah i feel you <laughs> but yeah i know you see so, it's like synchronicity kind yeah, of yeah so i uh, and uh all that, you know, like um, I get to feel my horse. You know, you feel the energy. Like it's, they have a lot of energy. Horses have a lot of energy, so yeah. you feel them. You know, so like choose. They they all tell you uh, if if they're tired or that's that's all. Hey, you know what? That's that's all I got, buddy. You know, I have you. You can tell when the horse give you everything, or you can tell when your horse is like, no, no, we we have something. You know, oh. there is little tricks that you can do mid race to kind of test how much horse you have left. You know. Okay. So yeah. what are some of those? Take me through some of those, like just even small little things. <laughs> small little things is like, for example, you know, you don't you're um you're like comfortable holding him. You know, he's obeying what you're saying, and all of a sudden you kind of go like, and they they choose like the. You feel the push, the the the, the push, kind of shifting gears in a car. You feel that okay, I have it. So you can uh, like you ease up on him and be like, okay, don't okay, worry. Yeah, I see what's up, baby. We're gonna do it when yeah. we need to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And then sometimes you're asking the horse and he goes nowhere, and then he's like, oh, bro, it's gonna be a rough trip. He's like looking at the concession stand. In the <laughs> yeah, distance. basically, yeah. <laughs> um, is there a way to to turn around? Say a horse kind of feels like it's not into it, or it's gassed out, or it's not having that flair in that race is there a way to uh recalibrate that kind of horse or or is it just kind of like sometimes that's just the way that that it rolls yeah, well there, there's like horses right it's a living creature so like no like in that and that is nothing you can do and meet or uh, uh, to 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 shift that you know when a horse can give you a all the air when when a fire is tired there's no way you can pump air into him and all right. of a sudden the, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> wouldn't that be uh, great if they brought a pump out I know right so uh, no like basically you 
I mean, it's our responsibility to just kind of like wrap up, you know, save him, you know, and right, and, save him. So then you're thinking about a a, a, a chance just, for him to run a few weeks from now. Yeah, yeah, wow. you know, regroup, you know, like maybe he wasn't feeling good that day, you know. That's the other thing, you know. You can be on the favorite, but what if that horse, that is specific day that he's gonna run, is it's just not feeling it, you know? Like oh, he is about to get sick you know you know sometimes when we are about to get a cold you know like you oh, can yeah. feel it you know two three days before like that Darren you kind of feel a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so the same thing with horses you know so huh wow that's so interesting man we got a question that came right here for you mario yo mr gutierrez got a question for you big dog what is it like straddling one of those land sharks with millions of people watching you, how do you stay composed and not absorb the pressure that is being a jockey in the Kentucky Derby? Much yeah, are there races brother. like the Kentucky Derby? Right Thank on. you, brother gang, baby. Are there races like that Kentucky Derby where it's <clears throat> the, the you just feel the energy is so oh, much right, bigger? Yeah. Yeah, it's I exciting. think I think the Kentucky Derby should be on your bucket list. You know, choose to go and experience like a hundred and sixty thousand people. You know, all eyes looking and like the twenty horses that are competing there. The build up to the Kentucky Derby is like it's a different beast. So take me through. Can we see your uh, race when the 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 uh, your first win there? And would you say it was 2016, 2012? 12. And how many times have you watched this a lot? You know, no many, no 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 very many times. Yeah. I haven't rewatched it, no. Larry Colmus with the call. Okay, so where are you at in this one, Mario? 19? Yeah. Off wow. and the in the purple? Kentucky in the purple, Derby. yeah. And as expected, Trinnyburg had a great start. Gem is also Okay, so let's stop uh, when we get to that. Between horses and Bodemeister is done on the that inside. Wide cam and again. So we can see. We'll go back next so we can see that wide where it's like the, the flock. Okay, right here. Start. So what's kind of going on right here? Like horses are coming out. Some of them, I guess, like are some of the like some of the riders are in the lead here like yeah is that because the 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 jockey has like kind of commanded them to be in the lead or did the horse just come out strong no a lot of horses are like being commanded to go to the lead you know and everybody is trying to be um it's like not necessarily that you want to go to the lead but you want to get a clear pass so you can be like maybe like to be in front of a horse whatever horse is behind you because that way you can get the, your position faster okay. you know Okay, and now if a horse comes up, say you, you, you come out of the gate and another horse kind of gets in front of you a little bit, is that bad for your horse? Yeah, because then you had to you had to regroup. You have to you have to check your horse. Now you have to weigh whatever that, that horse in front of you is going to do, and then you're hoping that after that, then you get to do, you know, your, your strategy or basically choose plan B or plan C, you know. Now you're there, now choose what you do, you know. You chose to stay there. Or you chose to go around that horse in front of you. It's just a lot of, like, you have to adjust in the, in, in the moment. Is there a moment, there's a horse here that's in the back, and he's only in the back by about three lengths, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that right, you think? How many lengths has he been in the back? Yeah, he's probably, like, around six, seven lengths behind. Okay, yeah. so. My length math is what it used to be. I was just trying to sound like I knew what I was saying. But so he's about six or seven lengths back. Well, he is. Does that horse, he still has a chance to win though, huh? Of course. Yeah, no, of course he has. Unless that horse, uh, uh, um, um, a strategy or, 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 um, was to go into the front, oh, you know. Going to the front. If, if that wasn't, if that was the case, then he's totally screwed. <laughs> okay. He's like not liking his his chances. And right the now. jockey's realizing at that point, yeah, oh, this is probably uh, just not going to be the day. This is not going to be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's let's keep it cruising then. Start. Gemologist is also out quickly. And where are you at right and here? Right. On the outside. Oh, there you are cruising, huh? Yeah. And now Bodemeister's ahead of Trinnyburg. Yeah. You're kind of in the middle right now, right? Is I'm that your purple helmet? We'll yeah, the purple helmet. I'm the in the middle. I'm going to bounce a little bit. Gas. I think there's some gas in it, huh? Yeah. Hanson's hard to control early. Gemologist is fifth on the outside. I'll have another is next. And okay, so we right stop, stop it up here, Nick. So you have turns here. Like, how much turns do you have? Two. Two turns. So you have this one and then coming out of it? And then the last one, yeah. 
Ah, oh. now what do you do during the turns, man? Well, you try to save I as hate much turns. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can't do much. Like even if you're playing a racing game or something, like on the turns, you're like, yeah, oh. slow down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you just have to like be in the turn. There's not, you can't. I feel like it's hard to use strategy. Yeah, it, no, you have to. You just have to help your horse to take the turn the best way possible, you know, and then like set up your uh, uh, um, coming out of the out of this first turn because you're going to get a stretch again, you know? Okay. And then line up to get the second, the last turn, you know? Okay. Okay, let's keep it cruising here. The rail will take charge Indy as they move into the turn. And then it's Daddy Knows Best on the far outside liaison. Creative cause, optimizer along the rail. Between now, did you feel like Milan you had a chance in this race Alpha, right here? What were you feeling like? I did that I have a chance because this is a horse that I, like, I was, I was, I got very familiar with him before going to the Kentucky Derby. Okay. And you have to understand, like, this never happened to me. It never happens to nobody. All of a sudden, a, a, a kid coming from a C racetrack or D racetrack, you know, like, a, and all of a sudden, you know, he is in the Kentucky Derby. First of all, it was a lot of doubts. It's like, you know, like, well, is he even have it? You know, is it really that? Can he be good enough to be in this type right. of race? Does he even have his adult teeth? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. You <laughs> probably, know, like a you lot. Know, of, yeah. Oh, they're probably thinking, oh, he's totally going to melt down, you know, or things oh, like that. Oh, the pressure and all these things. Was there know? a lot of pressure? No. No. I, I'm very lucky that I don't, the pressure, I, I'm very good under pressure, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't like commute. And you're in fourth right here? So? Yeah, I'm fourth right now. So this is the second turn. This is the second turn. Wow. I thought I was going to finish second. If you see that horse in the, in front, okay, he is like super, super in front of me. Oh, totally. And then, but I, my horse still has some gas, so I'm thinking like, oh my god, you know, I'm gonna finish second in the Kentucky Derby. I was pumped, you know. <laughs> I was okay, so stop pumped. Stop it right here. Stop it right here. Okay, what do you do on the horse here? So you have now. You all, we also have. I just want to show this here. This is called a what? Whip crop. Okay, whip or crop, and then we have your helmet here. Okay. And so that's pretty light. Everybody wears kind of the same type of helmet? Yeah. Okay. Do you... Now, at this point, how much times can you whip the horse? As much as you want? This, yeah. Uh, but a lot of rules have changed now. Now we're we're not allowed, you know? But I, I'm never, like, a, um, um, known to hit my horses a lot, you know? So if you see here, like, I hit once, and then you push your horse, you know, you had to give him a chance to respond, you know? Oh. But... Um, Back uh, back in 2012, there wasn't like a, a restriction on how many times you can whip a horse. So there, you it was like a stepdad out there. <laughs> huh? If you want, yeah, you could have gone like ta ta, <laughs> like you know. But does the horse? Does it hurt the horse much? It doesn't. It, it, what do you think? Well, it depends. I think back in the days it used to. If I wow. if I show you one of the 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 the, the um whips that they used to use the the old timers, you know. Oh, that, really, they used to use some serious, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's not as like, I mean, if this were lead, it would be tough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's go through this, man. This is crazy. So what is your strategy right here? Like, do you have any? Well, no, that does it. Like, as soon as you go to the last stretch, see, that, like, that's just like, try to go as far, like, try to ask your horse to finish, like, to are give you, you the Are you yelling best. at the horse? Yeah. Verbally? Yeah, I, I, what I, do you I, say? Ah, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Oh my God! It's so and that cool. was Dullahan and went the day well. You must have been. I was already crying there, like a little bit. Wow! Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Doug O'Neill accepting the hugs all around. Oh man, that must have been awesome. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah. Then that. Well, I guess like you know, like you say, compared that's like our Super Bowl. You know, like so my whole life. I was 24 years old, I think. Most of my whole life, like just flash in front of me, you know, thinking that maybe this is why I don't watch this replay because then I get emotional a little uh, bit. <laughs> dude, I'm emotional. I wasn't even in it. I mean, I've done steroids, but that's the closest I've come. I used to do them in high school. That's the closest I've come to yeah, being in the I Kentucky Derby. I think watching Derby. the race here with you, I understand why I don't watch the race a lot. Oh, I'm know? sorry, man. <laughs> but it's really exciting. I think also it's a way to kind of channel with just that, that it's even a possibility for people, you know? Of course. Yeah. It's inspiring. Like if there's young men out there who think about being jockeys, young latino men out there we yeah. have a good latino audience um who think about being jockeys or uh it's interesting or they might have a kid who's like a more of a petite sized kid and like what could i get my kid into yeah, yeah you know yeah. you don't think that man you you, it's really almost the last thing you think about probably i yeah. feel like it's either hide and go seek or being a jockey i feel <laughs> like if you're kind of more uh p petite size you know um yeah. 
what uh so take me to through your journey as like how you got into like doing horror like how did it start for you yeah well like you say winning this race is kind of like it flashes you know i thought about myself like you know where back at home you know my dad tried to you know provide better from us you know like uh, um in and mexico I, or in no? mexico you know what part veracruz oh i've never yeah. been there where is it? it's nice it's nice it's it nice. sounds it's nice. nice it's nice it's nice you know it's it was on the a, beach or no it have we have a lot a, a lot of beach yeah so, uh, but I'm not from 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 the beach part of the state, you know. Like uh, I'm more like uh, to the inside. I'm I'm not maybe like two hours. Oh, you're on the Gulf side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Right up in the top, around there. That's where I'm from. Exactly Veracruz. around there. Yeah. El Eagle Veracruz. That's where I'm. That's exactly where I'm from. It's a big place. No, I mean when I was there, it's probably like you know the the town was around probably like ten thousand people. Oh you know? wow! Yeah. So you must be like a hero, huh? Oh, when I was there, yeah, all my friends and everything, you know, yeah. So because ten thousand is pretty small. I mean, it's, it's a small, small town. It's a small town, you know. It was a very small, very poor town too. Yeah, very very poor. You know, a lot of uh, horses, like um, a lot was horsing, like a big business there. No, no, no. For like, uh, that's how it's very crazy that I got into. Like, you know, even from the, my town, like that town, and anything around there, I was the only one doing it because, like I said, my dad, um, we were like really poor. We're very very poor, so my dad land this job and this farm, and this the the owner of this farm happened to own a quarter horse, you know, and then uh, he saw my dad, and my dad is a little bit smaller than me, and he oh really he probably looked at him and be like oh he could be he could be a jockey, so <laughs> he he went and asked my dad hey are you interested in learning how to become a jockey you know I want you to yeah. like ride my horse, and then my dad say yes because that's probably like a way. Uh, for him to do better and yeah. earn more money for and us. What a rare job, too. Yeah. So um, my dad said yes. So then I, I was like probably seven years old when I, I was watching my dad becoming a jockey. You know, so I, I was like, on, I love my dad, you know. So I was like, now I'm going to be just like my dad. I want to be a jockey. And since that early age, I was I, I, I just knew that's exactly what I wanted wow. to do. Your dad must be so proud of you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very proud. Does he still live there in Veracruz mm -hmm. or no? Yeah, my whole family. I'm, I'm by myself here. Me and my wife. I'm and your wife, there. yeah. Um, okay, so you your dad gets into it, then you... So how do you get on the horse then? Well, then... Um, uh, was then your my, dad good? Was your dad a good jockey? I think so. I think my dad was... I think he was better than what people wanted to give him credit, you know, as a jockey. He did it He did it um, for very short, probably like six, six, seven years, you know? Um, hey, you want to pull your jacket down in the back? It's just uh, right. Let's see. Yeah. No, I, you don't take it off. You can leave it on. Well, I no, can I'm just saying pull it down, I oh. think. No, just on the edges. Sorry. Oh. I can take it off. I'm a little bit hot. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I turned the AC down. How are you feeling? No, that's fine. Uh, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's a cool jacket, man. What is that style called? I don't know. My wife dressed me. <laughs> yeah, she dressed Dude, she me. She did a forever. good job. It almost has like an authentic, like, Me I don't want to say Mexican look, but authentic. Something like that, yeah. Something, something like, like a, that. yeah, it's like a, I don't know what it reminds me of. I just, I haven't seen it in a long time, yeah. but it's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so you then how do you get on the horse? So, so, um, so your dad's jockeying. Is he jockeying in races? Is he jockeying? No, yeah, and quarter horse races in Mexico, very popular quarter horse racing in really? Mexico. Yeah, all so over Mexico is very you popular. Bring that up. I want to see what that quarter horse is. And what, it's like the little ponies, the little ones? No, 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 big, big horses. Oh, too. it's full horses. Oh, it's a normal size horse, quarter horse, but then, uh, but it's a very short race. It's like a, like, you know, like uh, one of those cars that just go like a quarter of a mile, something like oh, that. Oh, dang. So it's like drag racing. And they're more bulk, you know? They're, yeah, yeah. So oh, like drag okay. race, yeah. That's, yeah. And it's a popular event too in Mexico? It's very popular in Mexico. Like in um, all the states in Mexico, there's a lot of quarter horse. That's how, that's that was like a, how it started when I was 14. I was doing a lot of quarter horse racing in Mexico yeah. before I went to Mexico City. Is it like a, um, what would you compare it to like a sport here? Because uh it's more popular there than it is here quarter horse racing yeah. probably yeah yeah i think it's illegal here oh right <laughs> <laughs> no 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 well, I, no i shouldn't say that no it's not illegal that we have quarter horse race tracks here but there is not a lot of them right what i, I was saying match races much what match, match racing means is like uh in mexico like anybody that, that, that has a farm you know, could build their own racetrack and they can 
put together a car or like a five six races you know right and then uh and then you charge people to come watch your event and then that's match racing you know i think that's i don't think that's that might not be legal here legal here to wow. do it, so yeah, because I think a lot of horse, like, it's all kind of, uh, it might be owned by a lot of, like, bigger groups and stuff, you Probably know? Something. So they don't want, like, the smaller guy getting yeah. up, you know? Um, okay, cool. So then you get, you start doing the quarter horse racing, and do you do well at it? Yeah, I was doing really well. That's, uh, I was doing really well. But this time, I mean, that from I was seven, now I'm 14, now I'm start racing my, uh, um, quarter horse for my dad and my, there's now people calling my dad every week and every 15 days hey is your, is your kid available you we want him to run these uh, uh races these days so my dad kind of was in, in in my first agent so he will like people will call him okay and cool, then my dad cool. will say hey you know you we're gonna go race here and there he's like my kid's not available <laughs> <laughs> like we want him to we want him to ride a uh, a bear and you're like that's yeah. not we don't do that <laughs> yeah, just horses so, that what happened. So that's how I got into four years. I did it until I finished my high school in Mexico in in, in in that little town, and then I asked my dad because now I'm like I'm like oh wow like I know I'm good here like I know I'm good here and uh, by this time I think uh, we were a little bit better off. So I think we finally were able to put in our farm a satellite TV, oh, and yeah. then we used to get we used to get ESPN oh, and then ESP, do it. ESPN <laughs> on the weekends there will be a. Now you're wearing Dwayne Wade jerseys on the back of the horse. Yeah, there will be a show that a uh, half an hour show will talk specifically about uh, the hippodromo in Mexico. About horse racing in Mexico. Uh huh. Really? That, that we have. We only have one 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 racetrack, official racetrack in Mexico City. This is the in Mexico City the Hippodromo de las Americas. So there will be thirty minutes, thirty minutes of like kind of giving you the, the the highlights of the weekend. You know. Uh, only highlighting the big races, so I will watch that show uh, every week. I will watch the show and I will see names, and I will see like these top jockeys. And now, in my head, I'm like, you know, okay, I know I'm good here, but am I like how good am I? This like, is it here, yeah, huh? Yeah, this is it. Oh, that's for that's an old picture. Wow. So then you get it in your head. Can I go there and do it? Yeah. So did you go perform? The, how do you say it again? The, the podromo. Podromo. The De? de las de Americas. Las Americas? Uh -huh. That one. The, the Podromo the, de las Americas. The Podromo. Down a little bit more down. You'll see it. Like that one? No. The one next above. No. Sorry. Down. No. That one. Oh, oh okay. Hipodromo de las Americas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's so, the big place, huh? Yeah. So and it's only in Mexico City. It's only in Mexico City. So, so you went there. Yeah. As soon as I finished my school... Uh, did you play any other sports in school or anything i used to play soccer goalie you know but i was really? so small you know with God, my friends yeah. Yeah. that'd yeah. be the craziest yeah who would put you as the goalie i know not to say that but hey just... we have the one of the best goalies of mexico jorge campos you do he was smart oh he smart. was yeah he was smart it's oh, more wow so maybe yeah. you're look what do i know man <laughs> yeah come on <laughs> so yeah so uh um, jorge um, campos let me uh, see him yeah see that one. Oh, he's a legend huh yeah I want a picture of him in goal. He was He's a flashy goal. guy, huh? I like the colors he yeah, has. Yeah, he liked the colors. Oh, that was like, I remember when I was growing up, that was a guy everybody wanted to Jorge be. Campos? Jorge Campos. Jorge yeah. Campos. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so then you get there. So I asked my dad, I said, like, Dad, I really don't want to go to school. You know, I really want to go and you know, challenge myself, try it. You just please give me one year. I was, I was like, I was begging him for one year opportunity. And then I convinced him. I packed my stuff and I went to Mexico City. And yeah. Was it scary or no? It was very, well, it was, but I, like, you know, when you're so young and you really want you don't really think about that, you know? I wasn't thinking how was it going to be when I was there. My, my, my goal was like, I just want to convince my dad yeah. to let me go, right? That I really want this, right? So I convinced him. But, so the moment that I got in Mexico City, I was like, Jeez, okay, now what? <laughs> you know? Dude, that's such a great <laughs> statement. It's so much when you're young, you don't think about what it's going to be like when you get there. You just think you about should, what you're thinking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that's kind of a bummer as you get older, you start thinking, what is it going to be like when I yeah, get I think, there? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's actually, I think that's one of the bummers, you know? We start thinking too much of like, you know, like, I think that's probably what, 
hold us a lot of people to like yeah. really go for what we really want you know so. yeah because you're right when you're young like i just gotta get there yeah. and then i'll see what happens yeah you know yeah. okay so you get there and how do you get into the race has your dad already agented you onto a horse or how what's going on no that my dad had my dad stay home you know so now i'm like you know my like um even though we're known in our little town and like the match the region that we were like match racing right. you know my dad stays home you know i go by myself <clears throat> to the to the racetrack right. you know, you're grande pescado in your in your <laughs> town <laughs> yeah so now i'm going there and then um like i said i didn't thought about how i was gonna do things you know so uh, all of a sudden <laughs> i'm I, I i i'm in mexico city i want to go to the i want to somehow ride horses in mexico city and then uh i'm like okay well i guess i go to the I go to the racetrack, right? So I go to the racetrack. I'm like asking people, hey, how do you get in the racetrack? Blah, blah, blah. You know, they, oh, there's this gay, go to this gay. So I'm walking through the gay. I have a garbage bag full of uh, some, um, um, my pictures and things like that to show people that, I'm, in fact, I'm like, I'm legit. I can ride horses, right? So, and then there's a, a, a security guard in there and be like, okay, I want to go in. He's like, where's your license? Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I'm not, I don't have a license, you know? This is like Rudy. It's like Rudy Rutierrez. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so, like, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm like, well, you know, like, uh, but I want to I work. How do I do that? And he's like, oh, you first have to get a license. And the guy doesn't give me any information on how to. That guy to, never does. Yeah, that guy never God does. damn, you know? So now I'm like, that guy is just he sent doses, me back. He doesn't care, yeah. So somebody else told me there is like multiple entries. So like uh, the next day I go try another one. Same thing happens. They reject me, and finally I land to uh, to a uh, to a gate where like the guy is somewhere kind of nice, you yeah. know. And then he told me, no, you know what, you know, like um, come tell them, you know, the come tomorrow. I'll let you in tomorrow, and then you're gonna go to the stewards. That's the judges, you know, everybody, and then uh, just tell them what you want to do and things like that, you know. You and are there other guys like you trying to get in there? Are you? No, seeing guys? no, I no. don't think. No, I guess everybody now I know. Once I got in, you know that how you get into the racetrack is like you you there is you have to have somebody in the racetrack that kind of brings you in, you know, like oh, like even I see. if it's like an, a rider, a pe person that is an exercise rider, you know, or a trainer that can bring you in, be like, hey, you know, I want you to introduce you to this, or I want you to be a jockey or things like that, you know. I didn't know anybody there, so I I just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so I go like trick or treating, yeah. Like, and like, Look, so I go. <laughs> he knew three security guards and two were yeah, assholes. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So finally, I, I went into this. Uh, it's good to know, first of all, that security guards are assholes everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing to know. Yeah, the that they do their job. Like, no matter what country, <laughs> where it is, they're the same guy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you go in. So you finally, you get in front of the right people? Yeah. Well, no, I, they weren't even the right people. I went to the judge, you know, to the to the stewards. We call them stewards, you know, the ones that, that regulate and the, 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 uh, make the rules to apply to the trainers and everybody. So I went to their office and they're like, okay, I hear you want to, you know, an interview with us. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to be able to, you know, to, I want a license. I want to ride horses. I want to know, like, and they were like looking at me and I guess nobody does it my way, you know, or the way I was doing it. And they're like, oh, kid, no, you're super lost. It's like, you know, this is what you have to do. You have to go to each barn, you know, you have to first try to land a job. Let's see whoever employs you you know, uh, uh, to be an exercise rider or to be, to ride a pony, to like, you first you have to have a job, you know. Once somebody is willing to employ you, then you can come, he's going to have to sign some papers and he, like, that's how you're going to get a license. So I'm like, wow. he's like, so I encourage you to go to each barn and just like knock on the door and see who, who, who. So then you're going barn to barn, huh? And you found someone? I found someone, that, the, the same day I found someone that, that was like, okay, I'll give you a chance, you know. And then it went well. It went well. It went well. Like I got, I got my license. I, I had to. I, I thought it went well for me. You know, I got to like exercise rider, uh, exercise horses in the morning for him. You know, and then, uh, and then, I, but that provided me somewhere to sleep. I, I live. I, I was living at the Mexico. Uh, city racetrack for like six, my first six months of. And do know. they have like lodging for the riders and stuff? No. Where were you guys sleeping over there? I was sleeping on the stove. Really? Yeah. On and the stove? No, in the sto stable. In oh, the in the stove? Really? Yeah. In like hay or something? I, they was like a little like camping little mattress that was there, you know, like. Uh, and was there a lot of guys in there? No, no. I was just myself. I guess wow. I, because I'm come from a small town, right? So right. everybody's from the city. So I didn't know where I, I don't have anywhere else to go. 
Dang, it's so wild. It's interesting that like stories from Mexico are now like stories from America like 50 years ago or 70 years ago. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's so, interesting, man. So that happened, but like quickly. I, I went there and in 2005, I was able like to ride my very first race in Mexico City. At and the hip yeah. hippodrome? Uh, yeah. Wow. It didn't go well. It didn't? Yeah. No. I and finished last probably no. like, by a lot. And did you feel like what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, this I remember the trainer. Now I now I had changed like different burns. I I think that now now when I was getting ready to 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 finally debut do my de 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 debut, um, the guy had me some pump and he was like, "Kid, you know I'm gonna when I put you on a horse, I'm gonna make sure at least you finish top four. You know you don't have to, you're gonna finish top four. You know." And I was so pumped. So finally. You know, when I was walking into the jockey's room and I was like, was so excited. I was like doing this and everything. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. You have an 11 rosaries. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to the race and the guy, the trainer told me, you know, I don't want you to do anything. I want you to look down and just push your horse, try to change whips, you know, like change your, your whip to, from the right to left, left to right. You know, I want you to look pretty. I want people to look at you and you, I want you to look good, you know. Don't look. Don't worry about everything. Anything yeah, else, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm gonna finish top four. So I'm. He's not guaranteeing me oh, I was yeah, gonna win, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm pumped, right? So <laughs> race goes. You know, we're coming down the stretch, and I'm like putting my head down, and I start riding my horse, and I'm switching sticks, everything. <laughs> I finally see the wire. I'm gonna stop my horse, and I got. I, I'm not even kidding last. you. There is some horse. Uh, I'm not even kidding you. There is some horses were coming back. Oh, already for the race. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was so devastated. I was like, oh, I wanted to go home. I was like, oh, I'm, maybe I should go ride quarter horses. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should just wear, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. That's it's so funny just to imagine somebody <laughs> just going all they can. Um, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. You know, you think you're getting grapes and you're getting damn raisin. That's when I first heard of Mint Mobile. I was like, what is it? Is it a, you know, somebody drives by and just shoot, you know, shoots, shoots a mint in, in your mouth or something? But when I first heard that Mint Mobile is a premium wireless service that starts at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what is the catch? But after speaking with Mr. Mint himself, and after using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. That's right. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed on to you. So if you're looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless, just 15 bucks a month. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. That's right. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, you have 15 bucks, don't you? Don't you have it? Check your pants. Check your grandparents. And to get that plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Theo. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash T-H-E-O. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Theo. You know, you want to kick your summer off in style with the brand that's reinventing men's basics, and that's Mack Weldon. They make underwear, and I, I, I love them, honestly. They keep my body warm. They keep my body held together. You know, as I age, my body starts to distance itself from its from my skin and my bones and everything. But Mack Weldon keeps you cool and comfortable all summer. From working to working out, happy hour to playing with your kid or kids, uh, Mack Weldon has men's essentials for whatever your day includes. And they really are. See, they are the best underwear that I've worn in a long time, and they are Mack Weldon. They have a swim line with trunks and board shorts that are quick to dry and have four-way stretch fabric. They also have a free loyalty program called Weldon Blue. Level 1 gets you shipping for life. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash T-H-E-O and enter promo code T-H-E-O. That's MacWeldon, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N, 
Theo.com slash Theo, promo code Theo, for 20% off Mac Weldon, reinventing men's basics, and they do a good job. I enjoy what I wear from them. Let me think about another question here. Okay, so then you get up to, so how do you get up to Canada then, and why Canada? Well, because I got the opportunity. But then, like I said, then uh, it took me a, a, a while to people to know me and start giving me the chance. But once people give me the chance in Mexico City, I started doing really good. Okay, so you I started picking up I steam. I picking there. up steam like right away, you know. I finished uh, uh, Top Apprentice on 2005, and I finished Top Apprentice in 2016. And I only wrote 2016, like maybe like half of the season. 2006. Be 2006, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, to the mid season because like on uh, on on early 2016 somebody from Canada came down to Mexico City uh, and asking uh, looking to uh, um, um, for an apprentice and a and a professional writer. Okay, you know, so somebody said like, hey, there is a guy um, from Canada. He's looking to uh, bring some. Um, and he took uh, you up there. Yeah, he took me up there. Was that cool? That was really cool. Well, it was well, it, the whole experience was cool. Like again, you don't think about what you get, how how is yeah. it gonna be there, right? So now I'm excited. I'm like, okay, uh, I call my dad. I remember I called my dad. I said like, hey dad, what are you thinking? He's like, well, you're doing this. This is I don't by this time my dad is like I don't see you ever coming back to school. So just go 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 try to go all the way see how far you can go right and are, is there money are you making money there in the mexico city in mexico city i was make because like i said like look we're very very poor so i right. was making like i thought i was like now i'm really helping my mom i'm finally buying some furniture for furniture for the house you know some cows some new tvs you know i'm upgrading i'm helping my dad my dad like now we're like finally living in like you know right we can buy shoes, you know. So. Right, you're helping out. <laughs> yeah, I'm helping. You're helping out. out. So, um, so yeah, and like I say, I'm picking up steam, you know. So I'm, 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 I'm good right now, right? So, um, when this opportunity came, you know, everybody was like, you know, but yeah, like we encourage you to go. My dad, once my dad told me, kind of, it was good. Like he gave me the not the okay, but kind of like the reinforcement of yeah. like, you know, like do the jump. I, I I knew I was going right, so I had to wait for my papers. And my you have visa. to ride up there on a horse. Or you fly up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I flew there. My first time in an airplane too. No. So now, like, it's finally like my day to go. I remember I was so I was born, I was always was like a mama's boy, you know. Uh -huh. So I remember asking them to please, please come to Mexico City and sleep with me before I was gonna, before you go before I go, you know. And you all slept there. Uh, well, in my room, you know, okay, they good. came and stay with me. You know, they they came oh yeah, and stay to wish you me. off, right? Yeah, yeah. And do you have siblings too, or no? I have I have three three siblings. I want I have a younger brother and a, and a two older sisters. And do they ride or no? No, no, nobody rides. Is it a female sport as well or no? Yeah, of men? course. No, no, it's female. We have jockey, uh, female jockeys here in in, in um, California and everywhere, everywhere, all the everywhere. Everywhere, you know. And Mexico, not much. But now, I my my brother now became an agent, a, a jockey agent, uh -huh. and yeah, there is probably like seven girls being uh, jockeys in Mexico City. Is he your agent yet, your brother? No. Okay. No, no. He has to improve a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, put Nick on a horse or put me on a rehab, dude. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll, I'll see when I come in. So, um, so yeah, that's how I see, ended up in Canada with no money. I took, I don't know, I think I took like 10,000 pesos. And I, my goal was like with this 10,000 pesos, I'm, uh, I'm going to exchange for Canadian right. money. Mm hmm and then uh, I, I, I'm supposed to have an agent, I'm supposed to have a place to stay, and I'm supposed to have a car how to travel around, right? That, this mm -hmm. is what they offered me. This is what they told me. That, About 500 bucks you had. Yeah, well, when I got there, I, 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 I exchanged all my money. I think I got like 400, 450 back in that the day, sense. you know, something like that. I don't know, but less, no more than 400. So um, there is like a, no agent there is no place to stay so they go and they put me in this hotel very close to the racetrack now i know it's very close i didn't even know where the racetrack was back back in those days you know and i had to pay for my own hotel right oh. so i stayed there three nights and all my money they basically i just spent my money in in the hotel oh. and then like um i had no food i don't speak english i Basically, was living on like on chips from a vending machine. That somehow I knew what a vending machine was. What and kind I of chips was it? You remember? 
potato chips and like some other type of chips that I don't know. I, like I was Fritos. drinking water. I from do Fritos. The, if I do a vending machine, I do Fritos. I don't even think Fritos were in Canada back in those back in. The they day. might not have been. Yeah. You know what? You could be right about that. So I was starving for three days. Couldn't speak. But that helps your weight, dude. So you get on a horse. I'm pretty sure I got super light, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was like, you, God you, damn You show up at nine pounds, ten ounces <laughs> yeah, on a horse. exactly. <laughs> this is really funny because finally my agent shows up and now he's taking me to the racetrack, right? Oh, and that's exactly what... Now, this is a typical agent. That's just like Hollywood. They uh, show up just when it's time for you to try and make some money. Okay, yeah. So he took me to the racetrack and then um, he showed me the racetrack and when I look at the racetrack, I was like, I'm used to in Mexico City run right in a mile racetrack, you know, a mile. This racetrack is five furlongs. It's like compared to a mile racetrack. Now you go like in a very tiny circle. And I was like, oh, this is the racetrack? Uh -huh. And I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> what am I doing here, you know? And I was like, okay. I And right then in my head, I made my plan. I was like, no, I'm going to ride one week. If I win, whatever I win, buy my ticket. And I'm, I'm going back. I'm out of here. I'm not going to stay here, you know? So that's what happened. I rode there the first week. I won like four races, something wow. like that, you know. And then I was I couldn't wait for like payday, right? And then I was like, okay, where's the check? So they come with the news. They'd be like, no, we pay here every every fifteen, every two weeks. Oh. So I'm like, oh god damn it, I had to stay another <laughs> week. Another week. And I yeah. stay another week. Okay, I I I I'll wait another week. <laughs> I win another week, win another four races. I don't know how many races I won, but I know when the check came, it says like around like 16,000, 15,000, something like that. Wow. And then the first thing I did is like go to the calculator, how many pesos are these things, you know? <laughs> and it was a lot of pesos, and I was like, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. This is not too bad. That's crazy, man. And so you stayed in Canada for how long? I stayed in Canada all, all the way up to 2011. That's cool. I love Canada, man. So nice. He's so in Vancouver, nice. too. Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Vancouver's cool, man. Kitts Beach or something. Is that out there? It's a different. It's not. It's not. It's not. That's not the name of the beach. St. Kitts or something. Is there a Kitts? I should know. I, I live there like a. Yeah, you probably. Yeah, I should have known, but I'm horrible. But do you go to the beach there sometimes? Like they have like yeah. rocks well, yeah, and like, uh, you get, like yeah. people There's, biking and yeah, everything biking and stuff. Biking and everything, beautiful yeah. There. A lot I of love, lakes, too. I love Canada, yeah. Yeah. And the people are so people friendly. are super nice. People are super nice. People are so nice in Canada, man. I don't know how they did it. Now they can't solve this COVID thing. Canada's still closed from COVID. Has Mexico been closed for COVID? Never, I don't think they never really closed. I don't think they never really closed. Dude, America, yeah. it's the biggest bunch of bull. I feel like it's such the biggest bullshit that they. Put I used to have those talks when this COVID began, you know, because I was like, I was acting. Everybody was really following a lot, and I was following a lot what's happening in Mexico, and I hear like the new president talk and how he was like, you know. Uh, um, his explanation for this virus and everything like that, and and there's his reason why he wouldn't close the borders. And yeah, people will will be some restriction, but he would not close the borders, you know. And then uh, I was like, why can't United States do this? And I, my, even my wife was like, you know, this president doesn't know what he's doing, you know. He's gonna like because the healthcare system in Mexico is not not that, the same. Not, as not the same as here, right? So I was like, well, we'll see. We just we'll see, right? And and it's fine. It's fine. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable, man, what they do. Well, here. you can even see it here. Like, you look Florida, you look Texas, you look... Yeah. In, or even 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 California, you know? Like, how many... Uh, um, you know, like we, we went, like, super crazy, shut everything down. Now that everything is going back to normal, you know... Um, Everything's fine. Everything is fine, you know? So, yeah, so. and it's weird. Everything just suddenly back and everything... Yeah, it's like it nothing really changed, right? Like, uh, even in our job now, like, going into... Delmar season in San Diego. Now they're. That's it nice seems that it's gonna. Yeah, it's nice, but now for us in this regard into COVID, it's almost like that. Now they they say they're not forcing us to get the vaccine, but they really are because now it's like uh, if I want to go and do my normal training in the mornings, mm -hmm. I have to be vaccinated. Oh yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm not gonna be allowed to go in the mornings and train. I'm gonna be allowed to race, but I need to be in a separate room. And to me, look, I'm not educated, highly educated or anything, but to me it's like, we're all the same family. We're riding here in Santa Anita. Nobody's getting tested. What's different for right now? Why is gonna, it has to be so strict in, in Del Mar than yeah. what it is right now? 
so but now it does those are the rules and we need to apply to the rules and it's the same thing this guy cole beasley who plays for i think buffalo now um he just said the same thing that he's a la- he's a wide receiver for nfl for uh, american football and he has to uh he doesn't want to get vaccinated but now he has to like practice separate it's just ridiculous but like, why but like, he can play but he's still allowed to play I in know, the game i know it's just crazy. It's like right now, right now, I'm allowed to go in the mornings, do my, and we're not testing, you know, we're just, we're still, we're not doing anything, you know, you know, even the restaurants, you know, why, why can you just, if everything is open up, I think they're going to have a little bit of restrictions. I don't know. Well, it's just, it's also crazy, like, <clears throat> the mask man is lifted in LA, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> also in Tennessee, but if you're on an airplane, you have to have a mask on in between. Yeah. It's like, for what? And also the whole time, like, so I've been living in Tennessee a lot during the pandemic. Oh, wow. And like everyone in Florida isn't dead. Everyone in Tennessee actually has been having a great time. And it's just, I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense. You could say whatever you want about the science, but even the, if you test the science in reality, which is how you create science um, with hypothesis, certainly huge cities not getting sick yeah no, has definitely. to be a valid test yeah you know? no definitely but it's amazing that mexico didn't even shut down i knew that <laughs> yeah. i knew they yeah. didn't well, i'm I thinking a, to myself like I, i've been to mexico i've been to like there were some restrictions but there was right. like but you were allowed you were still allowed to go to to um to cross the border and go and i'm sure there's still restaurants and things like that you know? yeah People yeah, who even go to like Africa, I was thinking I've been to Africa a couple of times. Like, I'm like, you telling me that they wandered through Africa and got masks on everyone in Africa? You're out of your mind. Yeah. It just all seemed kind of crazy. Um, let's get into a couple more questions. We had one right here that came in from these two. Well, here we go right here. What are these called? These uh, uh track rack uh, track know. tricks. <laughs> I don't know what you call them. Track rats. Beautiful ladies. I'm gonna call them. <laughs> Hey, Theo. Hey, Mario. We just had a quick question. We're from Louisville, and we were just trying to figure out where did all the rich horse trainers and owners hang out at? Oh, damn. Is there any bars sweets? or restaurants or golf courses that we should start going to? <laughs> and Theo, we'll see you September 18th to celebrate my best friend's 21st birthday in Cincinnati. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. Gang, yeah, that's Cincinnati. Buzz, buzz. Gang, gang, that, that Cincinnati show is going to be great, man. Uh, yeah, I guess these ladies are looking to meet some of the owners. owners how do they, yeah, how I don't do they know. They had to somehow manage to get into suites and ready. <laughs> the, yeah, no, the, like I say, the, the people that own the horses, um, they're like, they're, you know, like they're in fancy, a, a huh? different level, you know, so yeah. yeah Actually, but now there is like a, something called popular, they're doing like these syndicates. You know, like when there is like oh, a group of people, a group of it. people, there is a guys, there is a couple of guys that are doing it here in Santa Anita too, where like there is two guys, they get a bunch of people chipping a little bit of money and then they, they're on like small pieces of a horse, you know, mm-hmm. and then. Oh, interesting. You know. Could Theo just like buy a horse that are, is already. I think he can afford a horse. But, but that's already I like. I don't know about that. I'll tell you this. If I can, I'll tell you what horse it is. It's named Tom Thumb. And I met him one time at the Pasadena Fair. And it's the world. You get to name your horse whoever, whatever you want. Really? Well, actually, you just have to. You have to. Uh, uh, what is it? Like, there is. we have some type of. Oh, you have to send the name to a company. Send the name to a company. And then they will give you the okay. But oh. there is a bunch of little tricks that you can, you can do. So. But could Theo just buy one that's already like trained and yep. ready to go, and then yep. have you as yeah. his rider? Yeah, just- that is different. That's a, that's a, like I say that's a really complicated to explain that because we have like a old type of races, like in a whole car. If I can show you up, you know, we have what it calls claiming racing. Okay. Yeah, and then I think the lowest we have here in Santa Anita um, is like twenty. This is the horse I met right here, and this Tom Thumb. This is him right there. He is so tiny, you may want to take him That's home. That's a little four legged superhero right there. So everyone can meet the world. How long he gonna be here today TV. for? He'll be here all day. How small is he? De las grandes señoras de Kansas, el es más pequeño que algunas clases de pedo. Pero es muy un bebé, el es un caballito crecido. And he's alive too. Now you gotta give him a great. Um. So, so someone can buy. Say, how does someone get in a claiming race? What is that? Oh, uh, but that's kind of like the low level level mm-hmm. races. You know, horses they cannot compete in a lounge race. You know, they they're like they're a little bit lesser. You know, that you you try to put them where they can win. You know, so you okay. you don't you don't want to break the the horse heart. You know, so you kind of had to first 
find where his level is at and then raise them there so he can be competitive, you know? So there is, I think it's 20 some thousand dollars, the cheapest we have here, maybe, maybe a little bit cheaper. And then, uh, so you choose contact, you trainer or a, a trainer there and say, hey, I'm so-and-so and I want to claim a horse and you can claim that horse. And put him in the race? Well, you had to do this, you had to do that while he's racing. Oh. So uh, so after the race, right, you it's yours. Oh. No, if you put the claim in before, before he's going to race, right? Uh-huh. So now if the claim goes through, that means the horse, nothing happens to the horse. The horse clears the veterinarian and everything because they want to make sure that the new owner gets a, a, a sound horse, you know? Okay. So because you already put the claim and if the horse came back from the race good, now it's you won't, you're, it's yours. Really? You just yeah. pick him up? That's it. You just pick him <laughs> up and and call your trainer and... And, and get him and, going, and huh? And get him going. Dang. You know, that's, how, that's how you do it. That's what I say. You can own the horse. We could do it. We have room here, I think, maybe. <laughs> I would name it. I have one horse, actually, Brendan, that we keep back here sometimes, but um, that's a different show. He eats Kratom and nicotine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He's definitely... <laughs> He's on a unique diet. A unique um, diet. What are the fitness things that you do fitness-wise to stay in shape, man? I like, train boxing. You do? Yeah. I, wow. because, I, yeah, I train boxing. Just because that's the that's what I love. Right. And then uh, that's the only thing that I can, I'm can. i actually excited to go and, and, and do, you know? I oh. try do the normal uh, training, you know, the cardio and weights and these things, but it's just like... It, it's not exciting it's for you. It's not exciting for me, you know? But I go boxing, it gets me the cardio, it gives me the strength, so... Something. And are there other exercises that they ask you that, that, that help you be a jockey? Or is it just about kind of keeping your weight down? Keeping your weight down. You have, well, we gallop, we, we ride, like I said, we train a lot of horses during the week. So that oh. kind of, we get our fitness somehow from there too. Like our, um, um, we can do some type of, a lot of squats, you know, a lot of leg work, you know, our legs need to be strong, our core, our, our arms. Because the be position strong. you're in, can you bring that up, Nick, do you mind? Just hit when he's on a horse? Yeah. Cause you're real. I mean, you're in there. The goal is to stay as small as, as small, possible. Yeah, the aerodynamic wow. too. Yeah. And is there a certain like a nu- like a nucleus point on the horse you want to stay on top of, kind of? In the center. Yeah. Okay. See. Wow, man. And some do do can now can a little person like a or they used to call midget, but a little person can they be a jockey or no? Uh, they, they could. They I think that, I think that would be difficult because the arm length you know it probably, oh, okay so you have to have more so yeah. the arm length is a little bit limited yeah or maybe they wouldn't be as strong as you know maybe the, the push would be like yeah i'm just curious as if why that why why wouldn't more men or women like that be uh be be, be jockeys and what about a child anybody ever try to sneak a child in there can a child <laughs> no, do it no no you had to be i think you had to be 16 i think is probably the youngest you can start probably 18 but you have to be signed by your parents uh yeah. And so, do, does the horse get excited? <laughs> yeah, that guy. He's going to have a horse. He could do it. <laughs> Hasbullah, dude. Yeah. He could do I, it, man. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> I would like to see him do it, huh? <laughs> I think that would be dangerous. <laughs> we need to send him down to the yeah. hippo, uh, Hippodrome. In yeah. the Mexico, yeah. Yeah, and we need to send him down to Mexico City, man, and see yeah. what happens to him. That is funny. Um, do you, so, the horse gets excited when it wins? Does it know, You feel like the horse knows that it won? Oh, yeah, I think so. That's I'm not cool. going to tell you every horse is, you know, but yeah, they know, they know when they win. They even get they probably, you know, because they have a groom, right? The groom is the one that they probably spend the most amount of time with the groom, you know, every single day from super early to super late in the afternoon, you know? So, I mean, these grooms love these horses, right? So if, if, if their horse win, you know, they probably get the extra carrot, the extra, right. so they, they really know everything, yeah, everything, yeah. bobbing for apples, whatever yeah, they want. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying to think of some other questions that we had. Nick, did anything pop in your head or anything good come in? Here's a question from a beautiful young lady, obviously, and this is from the Dust Bowl era. Um, this question, and that's just a joke, lady. These are beautiful kids. And that one kid looks a little bit like, I'm going to say it, like Hezbollah, who just sent in, uh, <laughs> who we just saw the picture of. <laughs> What's Hi, up? Hi, Theo and Mario. We are from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in Canada. Mm-hmm. And we have a question from Mario. Our racetrack in town is closing down and they are opening a new one outside of town. The First Nation people are going to open it up. And I was just wondering if you have any superstitions 
riding on an old track that's tried and true versus riding on a brand new track. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Hey, superstitions, so yeah. I think we all have a little superstition, you know? Yeah. I, I did think, yeah. Uh, one of mine, in fact, like, let's say, like, we have big days of racing, big days when, like, we're, like, they're expensive races, you know? Mm -hmm. And if, uh, whatever I'm wearing, if I'm have a, if I don't have a good day, you know, I never wear that um, for a big day uh, oh, uh, of okay. racing, you know? It's, but I think we all have that little superstition. Is there more superstitions, do you think, between Latino riders or uh, or any other type of riders? Do you notice one or the other, really, or no? No, but I, I really think if I think everybody will have a little bit of something, you know? Like, even if it's a settle, you know, like it's... You, yeah. you don't do this type of thing before you're going to race, you know? There is some people, there is a very common thing to say to owners or, or, or trainers to, to, to say, hey, I see you in the winner's circle. And some people hate, hate to, oh, to, be, okay. so to they say won't say, say that, certain you know? things, yeah, jinx but, themselves. Jinx themselves and things like that, you know? So. Um, do you, uh, is there, will you wear socks and stuff during a thing? Like, do you wear, what do you wear to keep yourself as light as possible? Well, our, our equipment is super light. Uh, what well, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, this uh, weighs yeah, probably, all this so, total probably weighs three yeah. pounds. So probably like our pants, socks, vest, and undershirt alone is probably like only two pounds. Less than two pounds, you know? And will you eat that morning or you usually will kind of just have something light or something? I have something lighter just because you don't like, you don't want to go right with your belly full, you know? Like I have a coffee and I have like, you know, like a piece of bread or things like that, you know? Walk out so. of that one. This is uh, an accident? Yeah, so I was going to ask Mario, have you had bad accidents? I just saw this on your Instagram. You were sending a message to your fans telling them you were okay back in September 2020. Yeah, back in September, I, I think that was a very hard one. I, I got a good concussion out of, out of that one. You know, so I landed on my head. I just landed and I didn't move. I got scared because I never landed that way. And then, um, um, what is it like? Um, I just felt a pain that I didn't feel before, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm as good as gone." That's exactly what I thought. But then I was. You're like, gonna be in the wheelchair. You're gonna be doing yeah, the chariot races. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of fellow jockeys that you know they get hurt. They, they get hurt like that, and then that up in a wheelchair. And so, what happens? What is the number one accident that happens with uh, with horses and with uh, with racing? Is it that the horse stops and you fly off? Is that you get knocked off? Is it the trampling? Like, what's the top deal that it, really gets you hampered out? It's like, uh, for example, um, you can get trapped. Like uh, my last fall, I have a little clips. You know, there is like inexperienced riders, or not inexperienced riders. Somebody sometimes a rider can be a little bit careless. You know, get too involved in the race. And it starts shifting, you know, and then you get you get sandwiched in between horses, and you now your horse uh, clip heels, you know, trips and, and with the other horse legs, oh. and then that, I think that's the scariest part, you know. And then sometimes so that can, would be the scariest thing. Yeah, that would be the scariest thing, you know, because then it's like there is nothing in your control, you know. There right. is like you choose waiting. I remember back in when that happened, I was. I, I I can see the guy shifting, but the, he was shifting a lot, and I'm like, okay, he's gonna realize he's doing this a lot, and then I, so I kept riding my horse, right? I can, because I had a hole to go through. I kept riding, kept riding. He kept going, and by the time I'm like, I realized, okay, he is not gonna, he's not gonna stop, right? Another horse was coming way faster, in my outside, and that's how the sandwich happened. And by that time, it was too late for me to do anything, and I was just trying to hold as hard as I could, and my horse trip, and Doof. I went flying. And is it uh where where can the horse see when it's running? What can it see? Oh, horses go like they can see like uh, to to their side. Well, the horse like, the eyes are like a little bit on the side, so they 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 they're aware of horses coming behind. You know, mm -hmm. they can look backwards. That's the only thing. And is it only man horses that run or female horses? Female run? horses. Really? Yeah. Only female? Only female horses. You can ride like you can mix each other. You know, you can, but they're not very common. But fillies run with the fillies. Um, Males work with the males, but we don't, we don't, um, we have equality in the sport, so <laughs> a female can run with the guys. So, like in the Kentucky Derby, move this a little closer, if oh. you don't mind. In the Kentucky Derby, like, is it men in that race? Is it male horses or female horses, or it's both? I don't know, you got to get out of here. It's soon. both, it's both. Uh, um, I think one female, um, horse won the Kentucky Derby. Wow, yeah, I don't remember what's the name. Of, of, of the horse but yeah a female it's not very common you know but like yeah no they, they can run there's wow. no restrictions whatsoever of, uh, 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 for a female horse not to enter 
that you just have to qualify. If you're good enough to qualify, you can you can run. So more more commonly, a lot of the horses that you ride are male horses. I know both. It's both, both. 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 Yeah. Do you notice a difference in the horses? Oh really? yeah, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. The girls are more feisty. You, no you have, way. You have to treat them different. I knew it. You have to treat them different. I freaking uh, uh, yeah. knew it, dude. Oh, they're so. You gotta take them to the movies. Oh, you have you to be so kind and nice to them. Yeah, you know? open the door. Yep. Yeah. yeah they're more. Yeah, you have to be They'll so. They'll stand outside different. of the stable, just waiting for you to open the door yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Dang, yeah, they're man. so so different. So so different. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's I have so a lot different. of luck with fillies, with 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 female horses. Really, a lot yeah. of what fillies? Luck. You know, but they, they oh, tend you do? to run really well for me. Really? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they like you, huh? I uh, guess. I can see it. I can see it, man. Yeah. Handsome guy. I could see it. Winning colors, genuine risk, and regret. Yeah. The only fillies to win the Kentucky Derby. It doesn't look like any female jockeys have won. No, no, no. no they haven't won. Wow. I don't think, I don't think there's a female jockey. Hmm. Nick, did you have something else that kind of popped up? Uh, just with like uh, the gambling, like how there's always such a heavy favorite where are they getting that information from what is that based off of if because the horses don't have a ton of history behind them from what i understand they race for like a year or two so like how do they know who's the favorite and yeah well, i get you no know, they, they we we have like they have the past performances you know mm -hmm. you you can see for example um or they they um we they record the workouts as well you know, so if a horse is working in good times, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so that tend to be the, fa or how they doing it, you know, there's cameras filming them in the mornings, how they're working and things like that, you know. Yeah. And is all that available to the public oh, if yeah. you want to research yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that's available. You Max buy up. preps, dude. You, you, <laughs> there is people on, there is like the, 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 the hardcore handicappers, the hardcore. Uh, mm -hmm. core gamblers you mm -hmm. know that they you go you buy this book and you study this book and you can see the past performance what they have all kinds of descriptions whether the horse did wow. uh, if, he, if he got in any kind of trouble if he broke leg from the gate oh they has all kinds of things you know dang spit figures and all this type of mm -hmm. thing it goes too crazy <laughs> yeah. and can a horse spit do they spit what i don't think so no i don't think those are like uh, llamas i think <laughs> no? yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah you're right could you see yourself venturing out and getting on the back of a different animal you ever think about it oh it should like make a like a like a switch no I like as know. time goes on maybe uh, when you know when the, when the horse and days are over maybe getting on uh what's the one sometimes they put kids on the thing the little uh Oh they, yeah, no. They actually, do it at the no. I think the one sheep I, or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. The, uh, Once I retire, and the kids just like this. And he goes, oh. <laughs> Once I retire, I'm, I I think I'm gonna choose to stay. Like you know, focus on my family. Because like horse racing, the only like different about that is like we are all year round. No no yeah. breaks. No breaks for us. You know, and no breaks is not that you can't take up. You you I can I can say you know what I want to take a month off. But the, the thing is that, like, I cannot afford to do that because if you're doing good, you need to keep that business. Mm -hmm. You need to keep that business because the moment you're gone, there's somebody else that is going to be riding those horses. It's like podcasting, man. In some ways, I think it's like any business. You know, yeah. you want to stick it with it while you can. Yeah. And if uh, and if you're doing bad, then you have to stay there every day to, to somehow. Right, to so get better. To get better. I know. To get some. <laughs> and that's, that's. I'll probably put my kid in that. Yeah, it'd be fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, could you imagine how fun that is if you're a kid? Because you're oh, probably not going to get that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just, the crowd loves it when you yeah. when those kids come out. That will probably be really fun. Um, I could do that. I could see myself doing that. It looks so warm, too. <laughs> yeah, <that. laughs> you know? So fluffy. Yeah. Um, that looks like Brendan's kid a little mm -hmm. bit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, Here's a question right here from a young man. I believe he sent in a question before. I feel like this fella, I've seen him, but it's nice to see him again. What's up, Theo? It's my birthday, so I wanted to send a little question for your little equine piggyback fella you got there. <laughs> uh, when I went to a horse race, I did a little bet, so I was wondering if maybe the jockeys got in on that and maybe talking to the friend, hey, I'm going to beat you, I bet you 10 bucks. Or maybe, you know, maybe they just talk shit all the time when they're up there on that in them horses. So, dang. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Happy birthday, man. Uh, that's a good question. Is there any, yeah, is there any Greg Williams going on? There's any cross betting amongst the group? You guys do any? 
don't we don't cross bet, but we're like like we're so competitive with each other because that's the another thing. Like uh, as jockeys, we're freelancers. We don't make money. We don't re like if you really want to make good money, you yeah. have to be able. To, you have to be winning. Really? You ha yeah. That's the only time. You know, that's the only time you really make money. You know, winning. You know, like say if I ride five horses in a week and I finish last in all of them, I'll probably get. Yeah, what do they get? Six hundred bucks. Okay, so you you get a small amount for racing, mm -hmm. and if you win, then you get percentage of the purse. Like say Kentucky Derby, so that horse won. Yeah, I get ten percent of whatever that horse made. Okay, what did that horse make? Let's look it up. Yeah. Maybe like one point, one point six million. So you get one hundred sixty thousand or mm -hmm. whatever. You get a ten percent. Mm -hmm. And now is that on any any race you win? Ten percent. Ten percent of the purse. Of the purse yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah. It's really cool, man. So wow, so it's really on you. You got to get out there and do it, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You have to get. It. So yeah, so to ask that uh, that question, yeah, there is like, like because it's a lot of competition between us riders. You know, I can be like, I bet you ten bucks, I beat you in this race. You know, that type of thing. Right? Yeah. Is there some? Are there some riders that are just like all ego and just maniac? Oh yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there is a lot of fights. There is all kinds of you know, like if somebody cuts you off in front, like you know, the, we have fights. We have all kinds. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious, yeah. dude. It's really hilarious. Areas. What's a purse? So the Derby is one point eight million, so that's a huge payday. But what's a like a reg you're doing these horses races weekly? What are the purse? On, on Regular it varies. Is like from like uh, I think twenty five thousand dollar purse. Here is the lowest one, mm -hmm. and then it goes up to in a norm in a regular day, mm -hmm. it goes to like you know sixty five thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars. And so if you have four races today, right? Say you have four races today, and if the average race is a forty thousand dollar race for the day. So if you won all four of them, then you could make forty thousand. Then, right? Is that right? No, no. four thousand uh, times four, sixteen. You could make around sixteen thousand. Something like that. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool, and man. Day, yeah. And does all their money come from the betting? Yeah, the racetrack. I think the betting, the, the racetrack puts up that uh, that mm -hmm. that money. Mm -hmm. You know, the racetrack puts the purse money. You know, and so no, actually, it doesn't come from the but the the racetrack keeps all the all the money. All the betting wow. money, mm -hmm. yeah. The uh, the racetrack does put the purse, yeah. But uh, the purse don't necessarily come from from the betting. Because yeah. Otherwise, we'll get a percentage of betting. It will be probably much better for us. <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. that pay per view money yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. Um. So then, where you guys' money comes from? What the entry fees? You think or something? Who knows? Some I, I really don't know that part of it. Uh, but somehow the racetrack puts up that money. I, I think I think it's a comes share of it. A share of the gambling. Yeah. It's not all the gambling money yeah. is the purse, but but they probably take a part from mm, there, you know. Yeah. But like I said, but we don't. They don't share. The, right, they're not yeah, sharing all yeah, of it. Yeah, all, yeah. They so, never are, dude. So they uh, never that's are. How, that's how people you, paying for parking, you ain't getting a share of that. There's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Limonada, you ain't getting a share <laughs> no, of that. No. No. Michelada. Yeah, Michelada. there's a lot of things yeah. you're not getting a share of. Yeah, so wow, Mario. I'm just trying to think of any other thing that really anything, bro. Anything. So now, when would you switch hands with the whip? Does that matter? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah, uh, it matters because some horses like it better, you know. Or sometimes when you know the horse is still trying, but you need that little extra push, you know, you all of a sudden touch him from the from the other side. They get a little, bit, they're like a little uh, extra extra kick, extra push, you know. Like so, all those little like. But now we go into like super little details, you know, that yeah, little details matter, you know. Sometimes if you move a little bit too early, you weren't you're not gonna be able to get there, or you oh. get there too too late, or or you move too soon and then somebody you don't get there enough uh, uh, at the same time. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, so interesting because a car like a race car, you're in you have a you know, you have an amount of gas that you know, everything is so finite. Yes, yes. But with a horse it's like kind of you don't really know, so there's this. But but that's our job. That's why we have to know. Right. You know? Unfortunately, yeah, we don't know if we don't have an, uh, if that horse just give us all mid race. Yeah, that's nothing we can do. But so sometimes they, that happens. Sometimes you just get on a horse mid race. Yeah. Ah. No, yes. Or you don't. Or sometimes you you don't work with the horses in advance. Yeah. No. Sometimes you don't. You sometimes you just get. Uh, you you just that day you just riding that or you somebody put you on a horse that you never ridden in that you never have even training you know so now it's our job to like try to figure it out in 10 minutes you know what that horse is like you know on even through the race you know try try to um um manage to see okay how is this horse am i still having something is he still horse is this horse still have something he's gonna have something for the end all of that you know we have to be able to to tell you know mm. 
Did you, uh, when you chose your wife, did was she? <laughs> did you choose a smaller woman because you want to make another jockey kind of? No, my wife is tall. She is actually all my old are tall. Yeah, my all my girlfriends. I don't think I ever have a, 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 a had a a girlfriend like a, a, a shorter, same, same, shorter or the same height as me. Yeah, I like the I like long it, ones. I like girl. I like big girls. Taller girls. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Big difference. Hey, whatever. Yeah, big difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Uh, English. Yeah. Uh, any other good questions that came in, Nick, from uh, the videos? You said it's when your body tells you how you feel and how long do you plan on going. I'm personally, my goal is just to do this another six years. You know, till forty. Uh, yeah, till forty, and that's that's it. Like I said, you sacrifice a lot. You know, like you always traveling, and like my wife, like you know, there we have. It's very hard. To make friends, you know, because like friends usually do things on the weekend. On the weekend, oh, when I'm, yeah. I'm I'm riding, right? So mm -hmm. even if my wife, hey, let's make plans, let's like, all there, I'm like, I'm never available for those type of things. Even for my for my uh, kid, you know, like there, I can't be choose a part of the community of his school, or I'm not available for those things, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot. This is the type of things that like I know I'm sacrificing right now. And that's why I'm gonna I want to try to give my all. By the time I reach 40, I want to be able to have something where I can lay back and be able to live off that and just be with my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How often do you get to, so you live here in Los Angeles? Yeah, in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. How often do you get to be at home then? <coughs> right now, but, mostly but, with Santa Anita? Uh, yeah, most of in Santa Anita, but then, like I said, we go to um, to um, San Diego, then back to Orange County. There is another racetrack in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, but this is local. So locally, we're moving a lot, right? But then uh, before, let's say before COVID, you know, like uh, uh, I ride for this guy that owns a lot of horses. So usually he gets good horses. When you get a good horse, you don't necessarily compete just here at Santa Anita. If there is a big race in Louisiana or Kentucky or New York, Miami, you know, you, you travel to these to these places, you know. So it's a lot of traveling going on, you know. That's cool, man. Is there one place that's not the, is that like the, the, is it fun to race in Louisiana? Is it fun to race in Miami? Is it like the place that's really kind of cool to race? Miami seems like real beautiful. And yeah, cool. it's, Miami is cool. Like uh, I like going to Dubai. Dubai yeah. is good. Dubai? Yeah. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah, Dubai is cool. What is it about it? It's like too extravagant, you know, right. like it's like rich. People eating gold. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. The racetrack is like... People like, eating other people. <laughs> I think it costs like $2 billion to be the racetrack. There is a... Oh, there, wow. there is this like is your, the hotel you can watch the race. Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. It's fancy, huh? Mm -hmm. And a lot of money too. That's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes it's crazy to me how much money some people have. I know, me too. Isn't it crazy? What are they going to do with it? I mean, you're not going to live eternally. <laughs> yeah. It seems so crazy. And then you would see other people be poor. It just is crazy to me sometimes. Yeah. But. I don't think you really realize when you, like I remember I was very poor, you know, like, I mean, it, we were struggling, you know, a lot. But all the way up to maybe 12, 13 years old, yeah, like you don't that, know. that never really occurred to me. I was happy. I was laughing. I know my mom loved me. Yeah, uh, it's just my dad love us, you know, like, yeah, we know that we didn't, because you were aware of things that you don't have, you know, we didn't have TV, we didn't, but like, that wasn't like a, something for, to be asked to be depressed about. I think that the older you get, you know, even now, you know, like sometimes I feel guilt or I feel like I try to think what my parent, because now I'm a parent, you know, my kid mm -hmm. and we're going to, you know, to the store or we're going to this and my kid, I want that, I want this. And uh, for me to be able to provide for him and kind of like whatever he wants, I buy him, you know, and then to think, geez, you know, what are like, I remember me as a kid, when I was a kid asking for things, but I, I never, I never got any, Yeah, you know, I never got any. So I, 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 now I go back and be like, you know, how hard, what, you know, I will feel right now if my kid is asking me for something and I, it, it just don't have it on my back, bit. it yeah. will break your heart, you know, so. I give it to my dad for that, you know. I mean, that that probably was probably one of the hardest part for a parent to be able to give something that a kid is asking for, you know. Oh, yeah, I bet, man. Yeah, I remember some of the gifts we would get even growing up were just like regular shit. I remember my mom gave us something one time that we already had at home. She just wrapped it up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Listen to me. Like, I we, just, we have, <laughs> this is ours. I have a, a little bit of a sad story, funny story. I, I tell people sometimes now, um, I always used to write to Santa. Uh -huh. and freaking Santa never, never like, never got me anything, right? <laughs> so well, yeah. I probably was around like eight years old, and I 
uh, um, I was <laughs> <laughs> writing to Santa, and I don't know what I was asking for, but I know, I know he didn't uh, give me what I asked for, and then, um, but I remember writing, putting the car, um, and then the next day I woke up and a present was there. So I was like, holy this shit, you know, it worked. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't forget me this year, you yeah. know? So I'm all excited. I go unwrap the present. And I remember I had like this little soldier, you know, and I think I, I asked for a remote control car or something like that. And I was so mad. <laughs> I was so pissed off. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, this is, <laughs> how can you got it wrong and I was like unbelievable you never came and when you came you give me you the wrong, wrong thing you didn't even yeah. you didn't even give me what I asked for you know and I was like making this huge tantrum and I didn't tell anything about it you know until now that I'm an adult I'd be like you know like my dad probably bust his ass to be able to Get provide that thing and I for me to be able to that kind of brush my heart a little bit when I think about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hard to fit it's hard sometimes it's weird to think how kid like what parents want for their kids and then how kids sometimes are just unappreciative but there's yeah. nothing you can do you're just a kid you don't know any yeah better. you don't know I, yeah when you're a kid you don't know any better you know and sometimes it's like a clue my my mom would give us a sort of be like hey you should join the military <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess i see the only prepping way out. you prepping you already yeah, just you prepping you. Yes. yeah yeah oh, um so cool. i think man dude mario thank you so much man i really appreciate it dude I really appreciate you coming in and just talking to us. It's so interesting just to think about what's going on now. And now when I watch the race, I'm going to have such kind of a different inkling. Is there any point, my last question, is there any point in the race where you would stand up on the horse or no? The goal is just to oh, stay no, down. Oh, no, yeah. Like if you like if you kind of uh, uh, sense something like wrong with the horse, you know, like all of a sudden you feel funny steps on the horse. Like, yeah, you, you, you pull up that horse, you know, like you don't want to, like you try to, like I said, this is, this is our partners, you know, like I, Horses give me everything I have. You know, horses took me from poverty, sent me to Canada. Give oh, me, that's a good point. Give me, give me my, uh, I, I got my wife, got my child, beautiful home now that I own. So All through I, horses? All through oh. horses, you know. So I have an amazing amount of love for them. So every time that I, I feel, you know, something is just not right, you know, I'll stop the horse, you know. I'll stop the horse because, you know, like I say, that's, it's, I'm so grateful and thankful that, I, like, I'm able to do what I do, you know. Yeah, wow, that's so interesting, yeah. man. One day you gonna have you had to come. If you're not to the racetrack, you had to come to the farm where my my wife have that. Uh, yeah, can I go horse. one time? Yeah, of course, dude. I would love that, yeah. man. You, you you'll have a lot of fun. I would love to go get on a horse. That'd be freaking crazy. You should come to. Uh, I don't know if San Diego's gonna. I think San Diego's gonna have open f open full crowd. You should come to open the Del Mar. Del Mar. When is it? Do you know? It's April, uh, July 16. Opening day. You should come to opening day on Del Mar. Well, I can maybe make that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, you, you'll like it. A lot of, Del Mar is cool, yeah, too. A lot of pretty ladies. Is there? Oh, a lot. Oh, I'll <laughs> take it. Del Mar is beautiful. Yeah. Del Mar is a beautiful area. Most of the girls are drunk before the first race. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a neutral <laughs> note. Yeah. yeah. As, long as, the ho as, long as, as long as the horses are sober. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're going to be sober. I think yeah, that's what matters. So, yeah, you should definitely. definitely should Dude, yeah, we'll swap information, man. I'd love to come to one. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, and thank you a lot. Thank you for having me. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was so, I was, when you guys reached out, I was like, I can't, I was like, like I say, like a little groupie. Oh, that's <laughs> cool, God, man. <laughs> well, yeah. And thank Walker Bueller, man. He's the one who was telling me, he was, we were just talking about jockeys the other day. And, uh, and then I was like, yeah, we got to have a jockey. And thank you, Nick. Because I know Nick reached out and connected with you. So Mario Gutierrez, man, thank you so much for coming in, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Guys. Good luck thank in the races. Hey, thank you. Now I'm just floating on the breeze and I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone oh but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. And now I've been moving way too fast on the runaway. Train with a heavy load of my past And these wheels that I've been riding on They're worn so thin that they're damn near gone
I guess 